story of hip hop and rap, you know, it's glory, it's hot, it's hard. No, I'm talking about the music. James Brown to Nene Cherry, you can pick it, you can choose it. Sit back, have a snack, pump the volume, let it go, cause it's time for Storming Norman, who's been waiting to say, yo! Here in the South Bronx project is where it all started. DJs would plug their sound systems into the street lamps and jam away in the streets and parks. In those early days, it was a black and Hispanic thing, and it was by all accounts wicked. Well, basically, we used to do that in the summertime. A lot of people think that we used to give block parties all year round, but that's basically only in the summertime when it gets warm. We used to, you know, get a lamp pole, open it up, and um, stick the plug in, and get the equipment cranked up, and start piping. And you would play like early hours, like starting at two in the afternoon. Then the word would get out, and the crowds would start rolling in by an hour after, and you might have thousands. Hundreds in the winter time, we took it in the community centers like Browns River Center. We took it in the high schools and junior high school, like junior high school 123. This birth from, of this movement called hip hop started in the South Bronx, and we was doing it in all these different clubs and all these schools and all these junior high schools and community centers, and from there on, it became a big movement. You know, a lot of people must know that. Rap has started all the way back in the continent of Africa. There's also different musical tastes of rap. You have the love rap of Barry White, Isaac Hayes. You have the um, I want to know about your man, get down rap, but Millie Jackson. No kissy on the belly button and stopping either. And no going to the kneecap, getting over the good sh You just gotta ease on down. All the way. Uh huh. Uh huh. Woo! Uh, just get on down. Lord, how much? Do you partake? Oh, ooh, 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 How about, ooh, I had seen you. Oh, my, see, you part and got a full bed. Oh, God. I think all the partayers over here with the cameras. Uh, how, how, how low will you go? Uh, huh? You got poetry rapping by Nikki Giovanni, um, by the last poets. You have militant messages, wake up. Rap. I done wrestled with an alligator. That's right. I have wrestled with an alligator. I done tussled with a whale. I done handcuffed lightning, throw thunder in jail. That's bad. Only last week, I murdered a rock, injured a stone, hospitalized a brick. I'm so mean, I make medicine sick. Minister Malcolm X, Minister Louis Farrakhan of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the Nation of Islam. You have um, fun rap from the 60s. I want to thank you, each and every one of you, for my survival throughout the rock and roll crisis. It is because of you, baby, that I have remained in the business a beautiful 18 years. You had the um, hidey, hidey, hidey hole type of rap with Cab Calloway. You have um, the rap from Jamaica, toasting rap. God will let the world know how much I need you so shit I want the world to know. Gee, we I never let you go, you know. Come and say long time in no see them a dangerous thing. Say long time in no see them a dangerous thing. Bobby culture DJ, I took the man for a job him select the rhythm. No hear about the new from America building. Fish on we get not to jack who be on the bone now. Fish on we get to put my shall look on me teach on. Say every eye one on the on one on the eye one on the music on the tongue one. Every eye one on the show one on the music on the eye one. Say I dance for me gonna. You have go-go rap from D.C. And our style of rap is called hip-hop, which is based on the same style of music of reggae. It's, uh, it has a form with the reggae music or African culture. 
and our style is this style of hip hop, the funk. Everybody funkin' and don't know how. They should have seen the bull when he funked the cow. Funk so hard they saw some smoke. He said, let's get in the bed and funk like folks are laughing at you. It's also part of the old storytelling tradition, you see. Now, I'll give you an example, you know. Um, gather around, young people, while I balance the scales on the roots of rap and the ancient tales. If you don't know the roots from the trunk of the tree, then you won't know the branch of what the fruit will be. In the West Indies, they have things where they do rhyme things to talk about people and spread information, but the griots were oral historians, and the rap is almost like that, too. It, it, it only deals with rhythm. Got to hire people's See, I started the rap, the rap music, and uh, what they're doing is things I did years ago. So a lot of the West Indian culture has a lot to do with the birth of the hip-hop music. Well, a brother by the name of Cool DJ Herc, who is a Jamaican-born West Indian, who came here in the um, late 60s, early 70s, and he started doing what they do in Jamaica, toasting, or version, and started playing records and playing the instrumental part and rapping on top of them. He had his MCs, Coplerock, Timmy Tim, and myself, when I started hearing his style of music and what he was playing, the break beats, I had this type of record collection already in my household. And when I got my DJ equipment, I started playing this style of music behind him. And also Grandmaster Flash came out about the same time in another part of the South Bronx. So in all three of our backgrounds are West Indian background. Every area had their own little crew, their own little posse, but it was only one crew that everybody wanted to get with. Right. And that was the Zulu Nation. Right. Everything else was non and void. Right. They just did that because that was their part of the town. Right. But um, even though they had their own little crew, we had members inside of their crew telling us everything they did, every move they made. We was that large. Spies. We still are. It's called spies. We played heavy metal. We would play the funk. We would play reggae, calypso, soca, African, any jazz, anything that had a beat and a funky groove. And we used to manipulate it on the turntables back and forth, make different sounds or quick mixing, because at first it was just basically mixing. Grandmaster Flash came with this quick mixing, you had to be on the one. And then um, Grand Wizard Dead all came with the scratching and also Grandmaster Flash. And then everybody started doing different styles and playing different sounds to make the music um, enjoyable to the people. So when people came to our parties, they heard different things. You might hear the Rolling Stones mix, mixed with Sly and the Family Stone or James Brown, mixed with um, Calypso Breakdown by Ralph McDonald or Apache. Or, um, you know, we just mixed it all together and the crowd was going crazy. I also used to play commercials, used to bug the crowd out. I, I, they'd be drawing now, partying, having a good time. Next day I'd come with a Mountain Dew commercial or a Coca-Cola commercial or the Pink Panthers thing. And the crowd used to just bug out and stuff. Because I remember the first time a guy came, he said, yo, it's marvelous the way you scratch the record. I said, I'm not scratching them. You see any scratches on my record? There's no scratches there. But after a while, I guess, you know, that sort of set in as what we did, they called it scratching, you know, or whatever, you know what I'm saying? They got all different types of mixes now. You got the transformer style, you know what I'm saying? You got the, the style where they slow the record down and to break it down into different beats and actually change everything up, which all evolved from what we was doing, myself, Grand was a Theodore, Grandmaster Flash, the Nasty Cousins who also in the house, oh man, like, you know, that's what we was doing from way back in the days and it just evolved into what it is right now. We should take time.